This date has been on my mind for a long, long time. Knowing that this would be the 80th anniversary of Helmut's execution, I've told myself, come what may, I'm going to be there. I'm so grateful that not only was I able to be here, but those individuals who've been such a part of this journey, my partners in telling this story, Ethan Vincent, Russ Kendall, John Foss, were able to be here as well. This is my first time to Plitzenze. And as I walked through the gates the other day, just looking down at the cobblestone road, through the entryway there, looking at these walls, these mortared walls, these brick walls, it just brought my mind immediately back to the past, imagining what it was like back then. I know things have changed over time, but there's still a lot that uh, is the same that remains. This monument is meant to really remember all the victims of the Hitler regime that died unjustly, without a proper trial, without truly committing a crime, and standing for the things they felt were a part of their lives. So this whole place is actually sacred ground. We need these type of individuals to look to. We need those examples. We need to not only say, oh, that's, that's, it's important we know about them, but okay, why? What do we learn from what he did? What is the so what in all this? So to, to be gathered here tonight with individuals that have been touched by Helmut's life and to commemorate him and what he stood for, it's incredible to think that the Nazis tried to obliterate him, to wipe out his history. They knew what he represented. And yes, it lay dormant for several decades, but it's alive now. And his influence is being felt in this commemoration as, you know, strangers and friends and church members and political leaders are coming together, unified by this 17-year-old and what he did 80 years ago. We see all through his life and also his final letters that he had a strong belief in Jesus Christ and that he knew there was another place and that he knew that Heavenly Father knew what he was doing was right. And that gave him a lot of strength and a lot of courage. He is an example for us today. Um seine Freunde zu schützen, nahm Helmut die ganze Schuld auf sich. Karl Heinz Schnippe erzählte dazu. Helmut war mein ehrlicher, treuer Freund. Seiner Standhaftigkeit, trotz Qual und Schlägen, kann ich es verdanken, dass ich heute noch am Leben bin. Hübner verheimlichte nicht, dass er zum Sturz des faschistischen Regimes beitragen wollte. Glauben Sie denn wirklich daran, dass Deutschland diesen Krieg gewinnen kann? fragte er die Richter, die ihn am selben Tag zum Tode verurteilten. Nach der Urteilsverkündung rief er den Richtern zu, Wartet, ihr kommt auch noch dran. Helmut Hübner wurde trotz seines Alters von 17 Jahren zum Tode verurteilt und am 27. Oktober 1942 hier in Berlin-Plötzensee mit einem Fallbeil ermordet. Seine drei Freunde erhielten lange Freiheitsstrafen, überlebten das Kriegsende. Helmut Hübner suchte die Wahrheit vorurteilsfrei und sein starker moralischer Kompass führte ihn dazu, die Wahrheit nicht nur zu erkennen, was ja viele tun und dann Achsel zucken, sondern den Mut und die Kraft aufzubringen, diesem moralischen Kompass gemäß zu handeln. In aller Konsequenz, selbst wenn das den Tod bedeuten würde.
das lässt einen nicht unberührt. Ich bin hier mit meinem kleinen Sohn, der ist gerade zwei. Und sich zu überlegen, möchte ich, dass mein Sohn mit 17 für Gerechtigkeit einsteht, ja. Aber möchte ich, dass mein Sohn mit 17 dafür verurteilt wird, zu Tode? Nein, das möchte ich nicht. Ähm, das sind sehr viele Emotionen. Und dann steht man halt dort, ist einfach sehr gerührt, dass seine Mutter nicht dabei war, als der seine letzte Zeit so hatte. For some people, just before they die, things slow down for them, and they're able to pay attention to the details around them. And I wonder if that's the way it was for Helmut, as he was in the dark of night, walking from his prison cell outside into the, the night sky, and with these huge trees all around. I wonder if he was noticing that. Was there a breeze in the trees? Was he feeling the wind on his face at all? Did he look over at the guards? Were they looking at him? I wonder what he was thinking about as he was taking these final steps. We know that he was calm. We know that he was at peace with what he had done. We know that he wasn't apologizing for what he did. The last things that he wrote were to please remember him kindly and that he knows that God lives. And that's what he took with him as he walked into that execution chamber and calmly gave his life. mean something and I feel like that's why helmets really important because it really does underscore that what we say matters what we say can change the world what we say can help people what we say can hurt people and ultimately what we say can save people none of us can imagine a lifetime to live under that kind of duress stress and and fear and danger uh, constantly while he's dispersing flyers while he's listening to the BBC while he's doing the things that he felt were right and so when I think about this day and what it means that 80 years ago his life was taken, I'm moved by the thought that he is not forgotten. When he knew it was coming to an end, he says, I, I have no guilt. I will stand blameless before God. You know, he knew he had done what he felt in his heart was right. And our world is better because of that.